which type of operating system allows multiple users to interact with a computer system simultaneously by creating separate user environments? Is it A, single user OS? Is it B, multi user OS? Is it C, standalone OS? Or is it D, embedded OS? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, multi-users OS. A multi-user OS enables several users to work on a system concurrently, each with their individual environment. Multi-user OS provides access to different users with their settings, data, and preferences. Imagine a multi-user OS like a shared workspace. Different users occupy different desks. And for the incorrect answers, single-user OS. A single-user OS is designed for individual use, not multiple users. Standalone OS refers to an operating system on a single computer, not multiple users. And an embedded OS is tailored for specific devices, not multi-user interactions. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, which security measure involves verifying a user's identity using their unique physical characteristics, such as fingerprints or facial recognition? Is it A, firewall? Is it B, two-factor authentication? Is it C, biometric authentication? Or is it D, intrusion detection system? And now I have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, biometric authentication. Biometric authentication relies on physical traits for identity verification. Biometric authentication offers enhanced security through unique biological attributes. Imagine biometric authentication like a fingerprint scanner. Your fingerprint is your access key. Now for the incorrect answers. A firewall filters network traffic unrelated to user identity verification. Two-factor authentication involves two verification methods, not necessarily biometrics. And an, an intrusion detection system monitors for unauthorized activities, not for user authentication. And now for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, what type of malware disguises itself as legitimate software but carries out malicious activities without the user's knowledge? Is it A, spyware? Is it B, ransomware? Is it C, adware? Or is it D, worm? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, spyware. Spyware covertly monitors and gathers information without the user's consent. Spyware tracks users' activities, keystrokes, and personal information posing a privacy risk. Think of spyware as a hidden camera. It spies on your digital activities. And now for the incorrect answers. Ransomware encrypts data and demands payment different from monitor activities. Adware displays unwanted ads, not necessarily convert activities. And the worm is a self-replicating malware, not necessarily focused on stealthy actions. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, what software troubleshooting technique involves a using a virtual environment to recreate and analyze a user's reported issue? Is it A, System Restore? Is it B, Clean Boot? Is it C, Sandbox? Or is it D, Safe Mode? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, Sandbox. A sandbox creates a controlled environment to analyze issues. A sandbox provides a safe place to experiment with potential solutions without affecting the main system. Imagine a sandbox like a testing lab. You can try out solutions without risk. And for the correct answer, system restore reverts to a previous state, unrelated to recreating issues. Clean boot disables non-essential services, not for creating a controlled environment. And safe mode starts with the OS with minimal drivers, not specifically for recreating issues. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, what operational procedure involves ensuring that the system's access controls, user permissions, and authentication mechanisms are properly configured? Is it A, change management? Is it B, patch management? Is it C, user's acceptance testing? Or is it D, user provisioning? And I have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, change management. Change management oversees and ensures proper system configuration. Change management prevents unauthorized access by controlling system changes. Think of change management like an access guard. It keeps control settings in check. And for the incorrect answers, patch management deals with software updates, not specifically access controls. Users acceptance testing validates system functionality, not configuration. And user provisioning involves setting up users' accounts, not access control configuration. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, what software troubleshooting method involves uninstalling and reinstalling an application to resolve issues caused by corrupted files? 
Is it A, system restore? Is it B, clean boot? Is it C, re-imaging? Or is it D, reinstallation? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, reinstallation. Reinstalling an application can fix issues stemming from computer corrupted files. Reinstallation provides a fresh copy of the application, potentially eliminating file corruption. Think of reinstallation as a clean slate, starting fresh to address problems. And for the incorrect answer, system restore reverts to a previous state, not reinstalling applications. Clean boot disables non-essential services, not related to application files. And re-imaging refers to restoring an entire system, not just a single application. And for the next question for exam, question number seven. And the question states, what operational procedure involves documenting the step-by-step -step process to accomplish a specific task, facilitating consistent and accurate execution? Is it A, incident response? Is it B, troubleshooting flowchart? Is it C, knowledge base? Or is it D, change management? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, troubleshooting flowchart. A flowchart provides clear steps for task execution. Flowcharts simplify complex tasks by breaking them into manageable steps. Imagine a flowchart like a recipe. It guides you through a task step by step. And for the incorrect answers, incident response deals with security breaches, not task execution. A knowledge base stores information, not step by step procedures. And change management oversees system changes, not procedural tasks. And for the next question of our exam, question number eight. And the question states, what security measure involves restricting access to only authorized users based on the job roles and responsibilities? Is it A, list privilege? Is it B, MFA? Is it C, biometric authentication? Or is it D, intrusion detection system? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, least privilege. Least privilege grants users only the necessary access for their roles. Least privilege minimizes security risk by limiting users' access to essential functions. Think of least privilege like an access baggage. It grants entry to specific areas based on your job. And for the incorrect answers, MFA or multi-factor authentication involves multiple verification methods, not role-based access. Biometric authentication verifies identity using physical traits, not role-based access, and an intrusion detection system monitors for unauthorized activities unrelated to role-based access. And for the next question for exam, question number nine. And the question states, which operating system components manages the communication between hardware and software, providing a platform for applications to run on a computer? Is it A, kernel? Is it B, registry? Is it C, API? Or is it D, firmware? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, kernel. The kernel is the core component that manages hardware-software interaction. The kernel enables software to utilize hardware resources, ensuring proper operation. Think of kernel as a bridge, connecting software and hardware. And for the incorrect answers, the registry stores configuration settings, not hardware-software communication. An API defines interfaces for software interaction, not the co core component. And firmware is software embedded in hardware components, not the system core. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. And the question states, what security measure involves converting plain text into a non-readable format during data transmission to prevent unauthorized access? Is it A, firewall? Is it B, VPN? Is it C, encryption? Or is it D, intrusion prevention system? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, encryption. Encryption transforms data into unreadable form for secure transmission. Encryption safeguards sensitive information from interception and unauthorized access. Think of an encryption like a secret code. Only those with a key can understand the message. And for the incorrect answers, a firewall filters network traffic, not data encryption. A VPN provides secure connections, but not necessarily data encryption. And an intrusion prevention system detects and blocks threats, not data encryption. Make sure to check my Udemy Instructor channel where I have posted a number of tests for the CompTIA a exam. The tests consist of 90 questions each and they are very similar to the official CompTIA exams. The link to my Udemy channel is presented down in the channel's description. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video useful, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!